Welcome to my channel, in today's video I'll show you how to upgrade an analog speedometer to a fully digital one on a Volvo V40. Why would you like to do that? Well the reasons are obvious. It not only gives the car a lot more modern look, but it also unlocks a very useful functionality like the coolant temperature gauge on the left side of the cluster, which the analog cluster doesn't have. Let's say you already sourced a compatible digital cluster for your transmission and installed it, but it's not working. That's because, like with most modern cars, nothing is truly plug and play anymore. The cluster needs to be properly coded to your vehicle in order to function. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of coding using Vdash, one of the safest and most DIY friendly software tools available for Volvo retrofits. This retrofit method also applies to other P3 platform models such as V60 and XC60 with only minor differences in the trim removals. You'll find a detailed step-by-step -step write-up linked into the video description below. Alright, enough talk, let's dive into it. The first step is to get your car central electronic module pin decoded. There's a couple of ways of doing that, you can decode it using v which may take up to 24 hours, it's free but it's slower and would require a battery charger to prevent draining your battery completely. Alternatively, you can rent a handheld device like the one shown in the video. The benefits are no battery tender is needed and the maximum decoding time is reduced by a factor of 4. For the purpose of keeping the video short, we have skipped the decoding part, the SEM pin has already been found and added into v -dash. So we move on to the disassembly stage. To get access to the cluster, we need to remove the big plastic trim. There's two T25 torque screws you need to remove and then you pull the plastic trim towards you. If you want to remove the trim completely, you have to disconnect the ignition switch connectors. However, later when you connect your car and laptop to Vdash, you will have to switch on the key ignition position. The better option is to keep the plastic trim and plugs connected and just move the trim out of the way so you have enough space to dismantle and swap the new and old clusters. So now as we have access to the cluster, we need to connect our car to Vdash to sort out the software side of the job. What you need to do is connect your car and laptop with a Volvo dice or a good J2534 interface. You open Vdash, switch on key ignition to position 2 by pressing and holding the start stop button for 5 seconds. Then the car will connect and the diagnostic session will start. The diagnostic session has finished for us and as we can see there's a few fault codes which we won't worry about in today's video. To do a TFT cluster coding we need to go to car configuration wizard. Many will open with multiple popular retrofit options for your car but we are specifically interested in the TFT retrofitting option. When we open the TFT wizard, we see three options in front of us. First one prompts us to do a backup of the original analog cluster, so we want to run it. The second criteria is to have a SEM pin added to the VTash, which we have also done. After backup is complete, before we can proceed with the TFT coding, you need to purchase enough credits. One option is to pay as you go per coding, 
or the alternative is to pay for an annual subscription for your car, which is the better option as it will allow you to perform any additional coatings free of charge. The backup is now complete, so we want to sort out the subscription for the car. We open the car configuration menu again and click on the green bar that says Unlock Unlimited Changes. A menu with subscription options pops up on the screen and the one that we want to select is the configuration subscription. After you sort out your payment, you return to the TFT configuration wizard and proceed with the next step, which is the swapping of the analog cluster with the digital one. After connecting the TFT cluster, V dash will detect it and we will allow it to proceed with the installation. The programming process takes a couple of minutes and you can track the stages as they're shown up on the screen. The coding finishes successfully but before I show you the results I would like to change the TFT cluster theme to the one on the R design vehicles. The procedure is the same, we get to the configuration menu but this time we select TFT R design screen option shortcut. Once open you have different options to change power up navigation logo and so on. But here we are interested in changing the DIM theme to our design only. So we click next and proceed with the coding. So after it finishes, we fix the digital cluster with the screws and put the trims back as they were originally. So here we have the final results, digital TFT cluster with the art design theme and as you can see if your car has the post 2015 infotainment 
you will also get a different color theme on your navigation screen, which will match the color of the speedometer as you change it. We're taking the car for a short drive, making sure everything is working as it should, and we can mark this job as done. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe for more future content, and see you next time.